Spanish cinema is a different kind of beast to say the least, and in the past decade reams and reams of incredibly capable directors have emerged into contemporary cinema laced with that mystical romanticism of the Spanish language and their wholly original eye of looking at horror through layers of perplexing beauty. Many of them followed in the footsteps of the titan of fantasy and horror cinema, Guillermo del Toro, but before them their craft was honed with the wonderfully bizarre Spanish horror movies that paved their way. So without further delay, let's take a look shall we? Hello horror fans, what's going on and once again welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual I'll be your horror host Jack Finch, as today we curiously take a look at the Top 5 Scariest Spanish Horror Movies. And just like the Inquisition, nobody expects it. Roll the clip. For the curious amongst you, that clip was of course from the 2007 Spanish horror movie The Orphanage, directed by J.A. Bionia and produced by Guillermo del Toro himself, and it leads us to an important point because, well, we've already covered The Orphanage quite a lot, so that's off the table, and we've also covered the boy Guillermo in more horror lists than you can shake a stick at, so don't worry because, like always, I'll be keeping things fresh. Kicking off at number 5, Time Crimes, 2007. Boy, what a way to kick off this list, because for those of you that haven't seen it, Time Crimes is one of the strangest, most bizarre, horrifying, and wholeheartedly enjoyable blends of science fiction, horror, and straight up psychological despair. It's brilliant, and I don't say that lightly. Also known as Los Chrono Crimenes in its native tongue, Time Crimes, released back in 2007, was written and directed by Nacho Vigalondo in his debut feature film, and he even stars in it as the scientist, a man who only delivers more questions questions than answers. This film was absolutely made with love and care, and it has a sense of true character and originality that bleeds throughout like a bloody faced doppelganger with a head full of bandages. I really don't want to spoil this film, perhaps more than any film that I've ever told you about, but Time Crimes has more twists and turns than a hedgerow maze, and just when you think you've worked it out, the whole thing unravels and recalls itself all over again, wrapping itself up in a mystery that goes from a nice quiet day out in the countryside to one of the bleakest, most existential questions of all time. It tells the tale of a man named Hector and his wife Clara out in their newly renovated rural home in the Spanish countryside. While his wife is out shopping, Hector spies a strange woman lying unconscious in the woods, and with that, we're off. Seriously, this film takes about 10 minutes to set itself up, then it's off like a theoretical bullet train. Time Crimes is brilliant. Give it a watch. Coming in at number 4, Witching and Bitching, 2013. <laughs> claro, como siempre. Espera. Eva, te tengo dicho que con la comida no se juega. Now, this film is absolutely insane, and I mean that in a good way, because when I say insane, I mean a coven of cannibalistic witches in the Basque countryside having a dinner party and all their friends are invited. I told you guys, never piss off a witch. And while this film definitely hits the mark when it comes to gross outs and gore, it is perhaps the most genre friendly entry on this list, as Witching and Bitching isn't a horror film in the conventional sense, but it's more of a film made for horror fans. And if you go into it with that mentality, then I assure you there's a lot to be enjoyed with this awesomely original film. Also released in Spanish as The Witches of Zagara Mundi, it was written and directed by Alex de la Iglesia, and like most international horror movies, it never really received the true credit it deserved. And that sucks, because witching and bitching exemplifies Spanish cinema in its originality. It's weird in all the right places, in ways only Spanish cinema can be, with its dry, deadpan, gallo sense of humour, its incredible visual effects, its breathtaking cinema cinematography, and it's real love and care to give a pastiche nod to the horror genre and everything that came before it. The thing is, Spanish cinema rarely has any pretense, and it rarely takes itself seriously at all, and that's probably what makes witching and bitching so good. On the surface, it sounds insane, and it is, but the craft and care put into the very bones of this film, like with many films in Spanish cinema, is exactly why it's worth watching. Remember, don't piss off a witch, because this is probably what will happen. Next up at number 3. Fermat's Room, 2009. 
And some people may not agree with the placement of this entry, but I say be damned, because for me, Fermat's Room is perhaps one of the best one room movies ever made, and yeah, I'll include Saw in that as well. Listen, again, this film isn't just a straight up horrifying terror of a movie, there's no spectres or demons, none of the paranormal or the supernatural, it's very much a human thriller with a very simple premise. Four mathematicians locked in a room with one puzzle to solve, survival. Co-written and co-directed by Louis Pedro Hatta and Rodrigo Sapinha, and released back in 2007, Fermat's Room is a horror thrill ride that will keep you guessing from moment to moment, with all the styles and trappings of an old Agatha Christie novel. But if you're going into this movie expecting a standard murder mystery, you'll be in for a treat of a completely different manner. Fermat's Room tells the tale of four mathematicians invited to an abandoned warehouse with the promise of having the opportunity to solve the greatest mathematical enigma in human history. Inside, they are greeted by a mysterious old stranger using the alias Fermat, and after a courteous dinner and a few intellectual debates, that's when things get a little more intimate to say the least. I won't say any more because this film is worth watching just for the suspense, but yeah, Fermat's room. Give it a watch. Swinging in at number two, The Skin I Live In, 2011. Well, holy moly, where do I even begin? In fact, what do I even say about The Skin I Live In, the film considered by many to be one of the most impactful and bone-chilling psychological horrors in foreign language cinema, if not all of cinema. And in all reality, this film is a horror movie without any screams and frights. There are no jump scares. There are no ghosts of the past. The Skin I Live In is cold and it's calculated, and it's the bare bones tell all tale of a true psychopath. And most importantly, just like with the majority of Spanish language horror, it's an incredibly unique take on the genre. Written and directed by by the legendary Pedro Almodovar, the man responsible for some of the greatest movies in foreign cinema, The Skin I Live In stars Antonia Banderas in perhaps one of his best roles on screen as Robert Ledgard, a brilliant plastic surgeon with a particular eye for torment. Based on the French novel Miguel, also known as Tarantula in English, written by Thierry Yonquet, The Skin I Live In tells the tale of Dr. Ledgard, a renowned plastic surgeon responsible for creating a groundbreaking artificial skin after years of research, but who is later thrown out of the medical field for his illegal experiments on humans, forbidden to continue his research. As we all know though, as is the case with insane scientists, that doesn't put an end to Ledgard's propensity for changing and morphing the skin that we all live in. I won't say anymore because honestly this film will make your jaw fall to the floor and with reveal after reveal you'll be questioning how many more layers our motive are can strip from the carcass. It's a fantastic horror movie regardless of its placement in international cinema and it's a must see for any fan of horror cinema. Also this film is hella messed up, like really really messed up. And finally coming in at our number one spot, Julia's Eyes 2010. And hey, I know I said I wouldn't put Guillermo anywhere on this list, but come on, he only produced this movie, and that doesn't detract from the fact that Julia's Eyes is a downright incredible entry into the hallowed halls of horror cinema, and may perhaps be one of the greatest horror movies of the last decade. This film is fantastic, and it doesn't get the credit that it truly deserves, because if you came here looking for horror, Julia's Eyes will deliver that in spades. Written and directed by the lesser known Guillermo Morales, Julia's Eyes literally came out of nowhere, but as Guillermo del Toro tends to do, he saw a fantastic fantastic horror premise, gave it his stamp of approval, and we're all the better off for it, really. Julia's Eyes tells the tale of a blind woman named Julia, played by the awesome Belen Rueda, whose character is afflicted by a degenerative disease that is slowly consuming her vision. Strangely enough, Julia's twin sister, Sarah, is in the later stages of the disease, and as the film opens, she takes her own life. What slowly plays out is an atmospheric tale of paranoia, lies, and deceit, and what makes Julia's Eyes so damn successful as a horror movie is that it employs a strange, intrinsic sense of mistrust, where even we as an audience aren't sure whether to believe what we're seeing, or worse still, not seeing. Similar to the vein of Mike Flanagan's Hush, Julia's Eyes relies on its ability to subvert our senses, challenging us as an audience to question our own perception. And it is incredibly successful in that approach. For all its moving parts, Julia's Eyes is a horror film in the truest sense of the word, reminiscent of Hitchcock, but also spattered with shades of Toby Hooper and John Carpenter. But more importantly, 
importantly, it is very much a Spanish horror movie, and it's one of the best. Well, there we have it, horror fans. My list for the top five scary Spanish horror movies. What did you guys think? Do you agree? Think you can add some more? Well, you know what to do. Let us know your thoughts as well as any choice picks down in the comment section below. Before we depart from today's video, though, let's first take a quick look at some of your more resounding remarks from over the past few days. First up, in relation to our British horror movies list, Katie Liz says, The Wicker Man. I just don't get it. It's so overrated in my opinion. Oh, well that's, that's weird. Looks like we don't have any comments for this week. Hmm. Well, I guess that's that then. I'm just kidding, Katie Liz. Hey, different strokes for different folks though. If we were all fans of the exact same thing, wouldn't life just be boring? Well, on that note, horror fans, should stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video or just top five scary videos in general, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell. And I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos. And until next time, you take it easy.